If I were to spend the next 12 minutes talking to you from this angle, would that make you really uncomfortable? Or do you prefer this angle? Do I need to be aesthetically pleasing to you for you to listen to the words I have to say? They tell us we're fat. They tell us we'd look better if we were thinner. They tell us we need to lose just five pounds and then five more pounds and then five more pounds. They tell me this dress I'm wearing doesn't do anything for me. But did we ask for their opinion? They tell me that the cheesecake I eat is sinful. Oh well, guess I'm going to hell. <laughs> they tell me that the guy they think would be perfect for me is looking for someone half my size. But if he's looking for someone half my size, he is not perfect for me. <laughs> we get it. They've told us. Guys like thin girls. I don't know if they heard, but a fat girl got married today and yesterday <laughs> and to the day before. In fact, fat people get married every day and not always to each other. <laughs> so tape your mouth shut and shrink, they said. We try to disappear and disappear some more to take up less space in the world so we could be more accommodating to our row on Rosh Hashanah. And we did it, we made it to the inner circle, finally we thought, only we didn't shrink enough. We know this because they tell us. The clothing store on Coney Island Avenue turned us away for having a body and our thighs still grotesquely overflowed from the chair. Thou must diet, the 11th commandment Moshe Rabbeinu left off. <laughs> the doctor told me the other day my baby isn't growing enough. Petite is the word she used. But petite is good for a girl, right? Actually, I said, petite just is. It isn't a good thing or a bad thing. It's just a body type. It seems that it starts with an unborn fetus. It's been 29 years, and it's going strong. I get comments about my body almost every single day. Will it go until death? Or will the pursuit of trying to accommodate you kill me? I don't know how we got to this point where the objective of our community is to live a life in pursuit of thinness and where dieting is the norm, like Shabbos and Kashras, it's just a part of our culture. Growing up in the firm world is a beautiful experience. We are taught what it means to live with God and how to treat our fellow human beings with deep sensitivity. We are taught to support one another and I wouldn't give that up for anything. I am an empowered Orthodox Jewess living in the 21st century and I am passionate about being a part of this community, but I am not going to stand by while they promote a lifestyle that is so incongruent with our values. Every Friday night, my husband serenades me with the words from Aisha's file, praising my actions as a wife, highlighting my values and my purpose. But nowhere in the 464 words of that song does it say my purpose is to be thin. In fact, it says the opposite. Shekar hachein vehavel hayofi isha yiras Hashem he tis halal. Grace is elusive and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears God, not the scale, she shall be praised. Isha's Chayel isn't just a pretty song. It's a code of standards to live by. And I am not just a pretty body. I'm a culmination of my accomplishments. I can just imagine it's Sunday morning at the Avraham and Sarah tent. Avraham is setting up fresh water or whatever his typical routine was. Do you think Sarah interrupted all of that and was like, hey Avraham, can you come here for a sec? Does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> I'm gonna guess no. When Eliezer is out looking for a wife for Yitzchak, he has a little one-on-one -on -one with God and he asks for a sign so that he'll know when he meets the right girl. Here's what we're gonna do, God, he says. When the girls come to get water for their sheep, I'm gonna ask one to give me water. And if she's a size four, six, wait, no, <laughs> make that a two, four. And she says, here's water for you and also some for your camels. Then I'll know that she's the one. Oh wait, he never said anything about the dress size, just the other part about the water. Like Sarah and Rivka, our job is to bring the Shekhinah into our home. Light candles, bake challah, uphold Taras Hamishbacha, the three mitzvos we try to emulate from our imahos. In nine years of marriage, these two hands have made every single challah. And every Shabbos, we make a bracha and we relish it. It's hard to do that with your mouth tape shut. So if being thin wasn't a priority for our matriarchs, why is it for us? Hey, Tzavi, I'm gonna represent the single ladies. You go, girl. Remember Benos Safad? They were five single sisters whose father had passed away. And as women, they assumed that they were not gonna be able to inherit his land. They were feeling pretty upset about it, so they go to discuss it with Moshe, and they stump the rabbi. 
So he asks God, and God says, Moshe, these girls are right. They deserve that land. The daughters of Tzavchad were in a situation where they felt like they were being wrong. So they stood up. They took a stand. And they weren't offering some new age idea. They were simply bringing to light a concept that was Torah-based but had never been recognized. And I feel like we're in a similar situation right now. And by we, I mean every Jewish girl and woman ever. We've been doing things a certain way for so long now. We've put so much emphasis on thinness, and it's literally killing us trying to achieve something that we simply can't. We are hurting ourselves by praising and validating this norm of dieting. Or could we just call it like it is, disordered eating? There's nothing normal about restrictive eating, binge eating, and compulsive eating. The ugly truth is that dieting has a 95% failure rate. That means if you have kept your weight off for more than five years, you are practically a unicorn. <laughs> but for the rest of us, if this had been working until now, then why are we still having this conversation? We see a lot of before and after pictures, but we don't really see a lot of after the after pictures. And that's because dieting actually makes us fatter. And that's really the best of it. The worst, disordered eating, when combined with genetic factors, is the leading cause to eating disorders. And I'm not sure if you know this, but eating disorders are deadly. Some have the highest mortality rate of any mental illness. The Health at Every Size movement acknowledges that you can achieve health at whatever weight you currently are. And that doesn't mean you are healthy right now, but you could be regardless of your dress size. And instead of using the number on the scale or your BMI as indicators of health, it uses more accurate metrics like blood work and bone density. So we're not here to just scare you away from dieting and leave you in the dust. We do have another way for you, a non-diet approach to food. Welcome to the world of intuitive eating. Intuitive eating is a more gentle and kinder approach to food where you listen to your body's natural cues to guide you to eat. If that sounds a bit abstract, think of how your bladder signals you when you need to go to the bathroom. Wait too long and you're really uncomfortable. Wait longer, now you have a UTI. <laughs> Our body has a similar system for eating, only we kind of lost the manual. The good news is, is the intuitive eating book is a pretty close second. It has 10 principles that guide you to learn how to listen to your body's natural cues again to eat. Like, learn to eat when you're hungry and to stop when you're full. And if you wait too long, that's okay. There's no guilt involved. Use that as your body's feedback and try again next time. It also asks you to embrace your appetite. God created our bodies with taste buds to enjoy and gain pleasure from food. So go out there, explore, try all kinds of foods, see which ones feel good in your body. And when you do that, really weird things start happening. You might find yourself craving salmon, saying no to foods like ice cream because you just don't really want ice cream. And I promise you that really happens. <laughs> it does. <laughs> As you eat intuitively, you'll see that food is something you just simply live with. It's not something that you have to live in fear of. Learning to respect your body signals is not just for how we eat, but for how we approach fitness as well. I am a naturally weak person. My favorite sport growing up was sitting on the couch with a really good book. I was the last kid chosen for any team, and yes, I spent most of recess running from the Mahanayim ball. Coming to fitness at the age of 21 and exploring exercise was the greatest gift that I've given myself. And I didn't lose any weight from working out. But what I did discover is how incredibly awesome my body can be. I am no longer that kid who was not even allowed to bring in the water bottles after a shopping trip because she would complain that her back hurt. We should be focusing on behaviors rather than on weight. We know that someone in a larger body who exercises and maintains other healthy habits is no more likely to die young than someone in a smaller body who does the same. And for those of you who like numbers, 16 to 17% of deaths in the US are due to low fitness as opposed to obesity, which is only two to 3% once fitness is factored out. Basically, adding exercise into your life is more likely to extend it than weight loss is. And think about how much more you can do for your community if you're actually around. So let's ditch this mindset that exercise is a weight loss tool. Figure out what it is that you enjoy doing. If you're dreading tonight's workout, 
or you're one of those people who own an elliptical shaped clothing rack, <laughs> may maybe it's time to try something different. Find out when you like working out, for how long, where, with whom. Tune in and notice when you're okay pushing past your comfort zone and when you need to slow it down. When you're itching for high intensity interval training and when you just want restorative yoga. Respecting and honoring your body's exercise preferences is key to a healthy relationship with movement. As you eat intuitively, you'll start seeing some shifts in your physical health too. More energy, sleeping deeper, thicker, faster nail growth. That hormonal issue I thought I had causing my hair to fall out, turns out that was malnourishment. You can follow a diet perfectly, be above your goal weight, and still be starving your body of nutrition. And although it doesn't focus on weight loss, intuitive eating is the only research-based proven method that we know of today to support long-term stabilization. So in other words, it's really the only answer to get off all of that yo-yo dieting that you've been doing. I come home from every workout on such a high, I feel like I could conquer the world. Like life could throw at me whatever problems it care to, and I could confidently handle them with ease. What if you could feel the same way? What if we grant ourselves permission to say yes to opportunities that involve physical activities, to try things we've never considered trying before? What if you found out that you could back squat 150 pounds? Or that rock climbing is actually a lot of fun when you go with friends? What if your weight didn't have to be this dark, looming cloud over your head anymore, and instead you had more space to focus on being that overachieving Aisha's Kyle we talked about? Or you had more opportunity to find more joy and deepen the meaning in your life, being a more present parent, a more connected spouse, a better friend? What if you finally had time to go after that weekly chavruta you've always wanted, or felt empowered for that career change you've secretly dreamed of? What if we viewed exercise as a way to release tension, increase energy, and feel good about what we could do? What if we learned to care about how our bodies feel as much as we cared about how many pounds we lost? So we ask, join us, hold our hands, and jump off that bandwagon for good. Let's find that fire, that strong, empowered woman that the Torah time and again portrays. I know that this is something we've been waiting for in our community. When I gave up dieting, it was isolating. I didn't know a single person doing it except for one health coach that I found on YouTube and a handful of online bloggers. Now, I admin a Facebook group called Intuitive Eating and Body Positivity for Jewish Women. It has grown to 3,000 members in four months, all asking for an alternative to dieting and keeping their bodies healthy. I've also connected with so many Jewish professionals in the weight neutral approach to health. Like Sarah, for example. Do you know what she can do? <laughs> well, since she asked, <laughs> I can deadlift 255 pounds. I can run a 10K. And I compete in local CrossFit competitions. Yep, in my long sleeve shirt and my colorful skirt. <laughs> I founded my company, Fit Jewess, with the mission of connecting Jewish women worldwide and fostering a community that's united through body positive and weight neutral fitness. And still, with all of the changes that I've made, standing here today, nine months pregnant, with two very swollen feet, <laughs> knowing that this is being recorded on video makes me really uncomfortable. I don't like how I look on video. The difference is I no longer live in that space. Push above your insecurity. Flip the script in how you see yourself. See yourself how someone who loves you unconditionally sees you. My husband, he doesn't dissect my body as cottage cheese dimpled thighs. He sees me as his powerhouse wife who's beautiful and strong, okay, and kind of crazy. And my daughter, she doesn't see my arms as bat wings to be ashamed of. They're her comfort to give her a hug during a thunderstorm. Stop fighting your body like it's the enemy. Because if your changes are coming from a place of hate, they're not going to last. Instead, learn to be an ally with your body. You're on the same team. And when you can embrace all of your body from a place of self-love and kindness, that's when real positive change happens. And when you have that, who cares what anyone says about your body?